All right, welcome to Public Policy, Unit 6, Video 1, Fiscal Policy. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a little bit sick here. All right, so fiscal policy, it is, we're talking about government tax and spending policy. Um, sometimes you'll see the word revenue used, so I would tell you to probably put that there as well. When you talk about raising revenue, you're talking about money for the government or money for somebody, but in this case, the government. So anytime the government is spending money or taxing people, that is fiscal policy. Um, pretty much that simple. It is controlled by Congress and the president. They are the ones who are in charge of our fiscal policy. We already learned earlier in the year that all tax and revenue bills have to originate in the House of Representatives, very good, in the Ways and Com Means Committee. All right, so, and then the president signs off on those things. All right, something we haven't seen in a while, obviously since your boy Bill Clinton right there in the corner, um, a budget surplus, that is when tax revenue is greater than government spending, and you can see we had a surplus for four glorious years from 98 to 2001, and lots and lots of deficits ever since. Um, so surplus is when revenue is greater than spending. On the other hand, deficit, what we are used to is that, and you have tax revenue is less than government spending. Um, and you can see how large those deficits have become. All right, so how does the government borrow money? Because if they are spending more than they are bringing in in revenue deficits, which we have been since 2002, how are they able to do that? And the answer is that they sell treasury bonds. To borrow money, the federal government sells treasury bonds. This is the way that the government borrows money. They sell a bond. Anybody in the world can buy a bond, um, and you buy that bond, and you are essentially allowing the government to borrow money for a specified amount of time. And when that time is up, the government owes you that money back, and they pay you interest all along the way as they borrow that money. So it's an investment. You don't buy a bond because you want to help the government or it's a political thing, not at all. You buy a bond because it is one of the safest things you can do with your money. Um, so a lot of people own treasury bonds just pure, for pure safety. You're not going to get rich, but your money will be very safe. Um, debt, this is the total amount of money owed. Now, by itself, that seems obvious, um, and that number could probably be updated to about $19 trillion right now. Um, but when we talk about debt, we're talking about the total amount of money owed. That's different than deficit. Deficit is on a yearly basis. So deficit for one year would be, this is how much more the government spent than it brought in in revenue. Whereas debt, we add up all of the money owed over time. So the debt is going to be a much larger number. Like for instance, in 2015, um, I haven't seen the final number yet, but our deficit for the year was somewhere around 450 to 500 billion dollars. Our total national debt is more like $19 trillion, so the debt is the much larger number. Federal budget, all right, so a little bit about that process. The president proposes the federal budget to Congress, and the agency that helps him to do that is the Office of Management and Budget, often referred to as the OMB. They are the executive agency that reviews the budget for the president. Um, obviously, the president doesn't personally make every line of the budget. The budget is hundreds and sometimes thousands of pages long of everything the federal government is going to spend. So the OMB, they are the agency in charge of that. And again, the key thing is to know that they work for the president. And um, so OMB, Office Management and Budget, they're the executive agency. Congress has something called the CBO, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Um, so whereas the president proposes the budget, and so he says, this is the budget I want, and you can see John Boehner with the uh, with the president's offer in front of him. That's a lot of pages, obviously. Um, the CBO, they are the agency that works for Congress. They provide Congress with nonpartisan budget analysis. The OMB, by the way, they also do nonpartisan budget analysis as well. The key thing is that one of them is advising the president, the other is advising Congress. Okay, so Congress uses the CBO, and again, it's nonpartisan, which means it's not saying, oh, that's bad because you're a Democrat, or that's dumb because you're a Republican. It's not supposed to do that, and they don't. Um, they just simply say, all right, if we do this tax cut, or this tax increase, or we spend money here, or we don't spend money there, this is the effect that it will have on the economy. So it's made up of economists, and they do a lot of work and calculations, and then they say, here's what we've found, this is what will happen as a result of the president's budget, or one counter-proposed by Congress. All right, so Congress finally will approve a veto, uh, sorry, will 
Congress will approve a budget eventually. They have to do that. Um, so whether it's exactly the president's or not, it probably won't be, but they will um, pass a budget. And when Congress passes a budget, just like any other law, they then send it to the president. And the president then has the choice of either approving it or vetoing it. Um, this is just you know housekeeping vocabulary. Fiscal year is from October 1st to September 30th. So the US government, that is their fiscal year. This has been a La Money production.